Hello everybody and welcome to episode 49. Remember last episode we learned how to save the game and the only way that we know that it is working is because we're kind of echoing it to the console uh, down here and we can see the, the data itself being saved. Uh, but before we go any further and do anything else, we kind of want to do loading the game so we can really make sure that both sides of it are working correctly and uh, we have all that functionality ready for ourselves when we come to doing the title screen. So, what we're going to do, similar to last time where we created a, a save game script that had both the save game function and the save string file function, is we're going to make a new script. We could, in theory, put them all in one script, but we'll just keep loading and saving in, um, the, these two different ones. Um, well, that'll give, uh, we've made one here called load game, um, and that'll give us a function called load game, but that's not where we're actually going to start. Um, just above it, or below it, wherever you want really, we're going to do the inverse of the function that we wrote here, which was save string to file. Actually, we'll do it underneath, so it's, I don't know, it's just aesthetically consistent, I suppose. Um, let's just make this font a bit bigger. I'm going to write function load JSON from file. Underscore file name is going to be the argument that we want to provide. And what we're going to do in this episode, we're going to essentially do everything we did last episode in reverse, okay? So instead of like we putting all of this information into a DS map and then we save that DS map to a file, we're going to load um, that JSON from the file, turn it back into a DS map, and then take all the info from that DS map and put it into the various globals and variables, okay? And then send us to uh, whatever room was stored in it and so on, and that causes us to load the game, right? So. Uh, for loading the JSON from the file, I am just going to copy and paste the, the buffer stuff into here. It's the same as before, just in reverse, you know, so we get um, a temporary variable buffer uh, that we do buffer load file name. And all that does is just literally takes the file that we provide um, and just loads all of its contents into a buffer. All right. And then we know that that's, uh, we want that as a string. So we're going to read uh, the buffer um, as a string, okay? So we're doing buffer read, where we're reading that bit of memory that we created in the buffer, right? By providing the ID of the buffer and then telling um, GameMaker what we want to read that information as when we're reading it as a string, all right? Which means it's going to take all that data and convert it into a string that it's going to put into this variable. Uh, once we've done that, we can get rid of the buffer. We don't need it anymore. And we just run JSON underscore decode um, that's specifically to turn it back into um, uh, a map list pairing. There are new functions now that will do it with um, arrays and structs. Um, so make sure you use JSON decode and encode and not pass and stringify, which are like the equivalents, but for working with structs and arrays. And then once we have that um, decoded, JSON is now going to contain the DS map that we created in our save game. Um, it's going to have all of this info in it uh, from whatever file we've loaded. Okay, so back up at load game, and we are actually going to provide an argument for this. Um, the load game argument is going to be underscore slot, uh, because as I said uh, in the last episode, we did a little bit of setup for it. We're going to make it so you can um, save to and load from different slots. Okay, so you can have different uh, save files available. So the first thing I want to do is when we run load game, we're going to set the game save slot to be whatever is in that, and then we don't need to actually worry about this anymore because we just we can just operate with the global at that point. Because um, we'll want to set that for the future. If we want to save back to it, we want to save back to whatever slot we loaded from, right? Um, then I'm going to do var underscore file equals, and we're going to do exactly what we did in save game uh, down here, which is um, when we when we wrote this to create the um, file that we're actually loading from. And I can literally just copy and paste this just from where we did save, plus the number of uh, the save slot, plus dot sav. I'm just going to grab that entire chunk there, copy it, come into the game, var file equals uh, that. All right, uh, I'm just going to equal that string, and then I'm going to do if uh, file underscore exists underscore file because there's no guarantee just because we're trying to load from a slot doesn't necessarily mean that that slot is occupied um so it's worth checking um if the file is not there we'll get that out of the way quickly um all we want to do is do show underscore debug message uh no save in this slot so that we get 
uh, that coming up in the output window and we have an idea of what went wrong if this doesn't load anything. Um, and then I'm going to do return false um, at the bottom here as well. So that when we call this, we can um, we don't have to, but we can do like a uh, um, did it work equals load game whatever, and uh, then did it work will contain false if uh, if we didn't manage to load something. We can check that later. Okay. Um, likewise, at the end of if file exists. Um, being true, we can write return true as well to do the same thing. All right, just lets us do some little um, error checking and, er and error handling um, very easily. So now assuming this file does exist, we want to load the game data. Um, and we'll do that by doing var underscore json uh, equals uh, load json from file underscore file. Um, you mean, I suppose technically just to have, it doesn't matter that we've used the same variable name as we've done here. Probably not the best um, practice in the world. I guess maybe I could have written like data or something like that. But uh, I'm not going to stray from my script too much. Um, you, you can do that if you'd like. It doesn't really make a difference though. Um, because the JSON that we use here is separate from the, the, the var that we use here. Because they are um, uh, function local. But anyway, once you've loaded that, um, we're going to do uh, global variables. Uh, and we're going to, I'm just going to copy and paste these in. Uh, because but, well, I'll write the first one so we get the idea. Global dot player health equals, like I said, we're doing the reverse of the save script. So underscore JSON, open square bracket, question mark, player health. Uh, close quotation mark, close square bracket, semicolon. Right. And that's going to put uh, into our player health variable whatever happens to be in the player health section of the JSON that we just loaded from the file. All right, and now I'm just going to copy and paste the rest of these over the top. And we're getting back player health max, player money, player equipped, player has any items, um, uh, target X and target Y. Uh, the ones that we have to do a little bit differently are um, the arrays that we saved, all right? Um, because they will be saved as... Uh, um, well, they'll be saved as arrays, but when we load them back um, using JSON decode, uh, JSON decode is going to turn everything um, in this JSON format into a combination of DS maps and DS lists. Uh, so all of our um, arrays will actually come back as lists. Um, just a quirk of doing it this way. So lists to arrays. I'm going to have a for loop um, that's just going to go over um, every entry in the arrays and the, the only arrays that we have here are the ones that count up from uh, entry zero to um, however many types of item there are in the game. So we can simply loop from um, i equals zero uh, up through i is less than item dot uh, type uh, type underscore count. Go on i plus plus. Um, so it's going to go from 0 to just under type count, so 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So then our first array, our uh, player item unlocked, uh, it's going to be global dot player item unlocked uh, entry i is going to equal json uh, question mark player item unlocked uh, close square bracket and then open square bracket again Vertical pipe because we're that's what we use for DS lists rather than DS maps. We use the question mark when we're looking for a thing in uh, DS map. Vertical pipe when we're looking for an entry in a DS list, and we're looking for entry i. It works just like the array, right? Um, so this is kind of a new thing to Game Maker. I don't think we've done a chained accessor before, but because um, uh, the JSON is a DS map, right? So like when we're accessing an entry in the DS map. We, we, we do it like that with a question mark and the, the name of the um, the entry that we're looking for. Um, what's new to Game Maker from 2.3 onwards that you may have not done before is that you can then go a step further and add this to actually nest your references and uh, get um, something from another layer deep. So we've gone, got an entry from a list within a map. No, what you would have to do before this point and what you might do if you don't know about this um, or and you don't know that doing something like that would work would be to be like uh, var items equals and then uh, this and then 
uh, items equals uh, items uh, vertical pipe i or whatever, right? So like you would have to like get the list first, put the list in there, and then get the entry from the list. Thanks to 2.3 onwards, you don't have to do that anymore. Um, or 2.3.1, whichever one it was, recent-ish version. <laughs> Um, you can just literally put another reference on the end in another pair of square brackets, and you can keep doing that. Like if you had lists within maps within whatever, you can just keep um, going another layer and layer deeper just by uh, adding another set of square brackets on the end. Okay, it's very very useful. Then very similarly on the next line, global dot player ammo entry i is going to equal JSON uh, question mark player ammo, which gets us the um, gets us the, the, the DS list that's inside player ammo, and then gets us the entry um, I, just like before. So it'll loop around there uh, four times um, and just fill these arrays with whatever is in those positions in the DS lists. The next thing we need to load is the quest data. As you remember, we had to do something a little bit fancy in the save game script to save that in the first place, because we had to not, not save the uh, reference to the DS map. Um, but we actually had to save the DS map itself, so we had to like copy it to another DS map, uh, mark it as a map within a map, and so on. Uh, loading it's a little bit more straightforward. All we have to do is call that same DS map copy function again, since we already have a DS map that we can copy to. We can just overwrite uh, global dot quest status, whatever's currently in it, um, uh, by overwriting it with uh, whatever is in JSON question mark quest status. Always be careful with these little sections, get the different brackets on the end correctly, so it's like uh, normal brackets on the edge here, square brackets there, just make sure that all lines up correctly. Um, last but not least, we want to get the room, right? Which is what we started with when we're saving, and it's what we finish with when we're loading. So I'm just going to do a room transition, um, doing trans underscore type dot slide, we'll just do a slide transition to JSON, room, uh, close square bracket, close regular bracket, semicolon, and then while that room transition is going off, we'll go ahead and destroy the DS map, uh, uh, JSON, because we've copied everything we need and we don't need it anymore, we've copied all the data to the various relevant places, and by destroying it, it'll destroy all the nested lists and things that were in it as well, and get rid of them, because we have all the data out of it that we need now. And then return true at the bottom here. Okay, um, so I'll just zoom out a bit there so we can kind of get the whole thing on the screen at once. Uh, for those of you watching in HD enough to be able to see it all at once. So that's all our load game functionality all built now. Uh, we just want to be able to test it and make sure it's doing what we think it should do. Now at the moment, uh, we have a room start event um, in our player, which um, just uh, saves the game. Um, just so it auto saves at the start of every room. I'm going to turn that off for the time being because um, otherwise, it, like if we're just saving at the start of every room, like I don't have a good way to just hit a button and be able to load the game and show us anything has changed because it's always just going to be at the start of whatever room we were just at. Um, so I want to be able to save manually and load manually. So I'm just going to right click on room start for now and go to change event and change it to the key pressed uh, function keys F2. So just when we press F2 in the game, it'll it'll just call save game rather than just room start. And then I'm gonna add a uh, key pressed function keys F3, and we'll do load game. Um, sure, global dot uh, game slave slot. I could have just written zero, I guess, but we'll just do that for now. So we know it's right. Um, then we'll run the game, um, which apparently was still running somewhere in the background. So we'll run the game now, um, and if I just, um, first of all, I'll press F2 here, and we can see the game saved, all that info has come up at the bottom. We'll grab some coins or whatever, um, and then I'll press F3. Um, you can even see the code just immediately change uh, as we come back to here, immediately when we back to zero. But this is indistinguishable from just starting a new game. So let's just like change things a bit more dramatically. We'll go in the shop, we'll buy the items. We'll, we'll essentially we'll do a playthrough, right? We'll complete the game. We'll even do the, uh, the quest so that we can see that that is um, actually progressing as well. So swap to the bombs. Taking damage helps as well because we can see that that's working. Um, yeah, the hook shot out, come across to here, um, we'll save now as well, just in case, and I'll come over here, 
kill the bat, grab the hat, come back over here. And uh, we've got the hat, bring it back down. Let's take a little bit more damage. Pop through into the original room, give the hat to the guy. Oh, I found it without even me asking you to. Oh, you're a true hero. Cool, cool, cool. F2, we're going to save the game. We can see the data coming up there. We can even see, like, the, the hat quest is updated to 2.0. You know, we can see where... Uh, see, like, uh, the quest is finished. Uh, we can see uh, what our health max is. That hasn't changed, obviously. But we can see um, what items we have unlocked. Uh, and you see the hook shot on the bomb there. The player's health is 1.5 and so on. Uh, the money adds up. Um, it's all saved the data correctly, right? So now what I can do is just restart the game. Press R or even just, like, like full-blown restart it if we want. Uh, just to be super sure. So it's restarted. Um, everything's like that. And I'm just going to press F3. You can, see, you can see it all changed right away. Obviously, don't worry about that because this isn't how we're actually going to be loading the game. Um, when uh, we, we finish it up, we'll have a title screen that you can load from, right? Um, so don't worry about that. We'll just sort of changing ahead of time there. Um, what you would want to do if you did want to do something like that, I suppose you want to do like the transition first, send you to like a, a blank room or something like that, and then... Um, uh, and, and then do all this data, or just set like an alarm or something that waits until this information is obscured before changing that, and, and so on. There's a million one ways you could do it, but don't don't worry about it for now. Um, if you're just following along with this, and you can see it loads everything, and it loads him, and he's got the hat on still. There, I'm um, saying restart the game. Doesn't have the hat, and he's like talking about the hat and stuff like that. Press F3, reload the game. Um, this is all back, and he's like, thanks again. He's still got the hat on. We've it's remembered everything that we've done. Okay, uh, there you have it. There's uh, saving and loading data. Um, next episode, um, it's it's either going to be the pause menu or the title screen. That's pretty much all we've got left to go. I was really hoping to finish on exactly 50, but I think it's going to be at least 51. Uh, thanks very much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all next time. If you found this video helpful or you enjoy the work that I do, you should know it's only possible and only exists thanks to the help of my Patreon supporters. If you become one of them today, you can get access to my source code, videos before they even release, and have a vote on the topics that I choose to cover. Doing so will help me make more, better quality videos for the future that are free for everybody to watch. So thank you to all my Patreon supporters, and of course, thank you for watching. I'll catch you all next time.